Teresa is going to come up and take us through our 12 power candle lighting. So we just had our God vibration. And now we're going to continue to raise our vibration by lighting the 12 candles, which represent the 12 spiritual powers within each and every one of us. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, he studied and watched many religions and faith traditions. And as he studied Jesus, he watched and became aware of the characteristics that the 12 disciples embodied. And what he did with those was he realized that each one of us embody those characteristics. And it's those characteristics that as we develop them in our consciousness, we raise our consciousness to our Christ mind. So what I'm gonna ask is everybody take out they have a red or green paper that's got um, the 12 powers listed in them. And I'm going to read the first part in the call. And then you're all going to respond where it says all. And I'm going to be guided to call somebody up to light the candle. OK? But first, I'm going to light the candle that's going to light the candles with the Christ candle. <laughs> So faith, the color is deep blue, the location is the pineal gland in the middle of the brain, and the disciple is Peter. Faith is our yes power. Faith is how we are saying yes to our good and that we are good now. All of us say, through my power of faith, I am assured that I am good, have always been good, and will always be good. No matter what I have done and no matter how I feel, truth cannot be undone. Luke, is Luke here? Luke. Light a candle. Will. The color is silver. The location is in the forehead, the left side. The disciple is Matthew. Will is our power of willingness. God's will is for us to be happy, joyous, and free in our spirit-minded thinking. We seek to will the will of God active and present in all aspects of our living. Today, my will carries out and all my faith is saying yes to. Doug? Light a candle Understanding The color is gold The location is the forehead on the right side The dis disciple is P Thomas Through the power of understanding We can know our oneness with God As principle, law, and spirit through the power of understanding, we carry out our will of everything that we are saying yes to so that each event is for the highest experience we can accept. I am one with God. I know the truth. I remember the truth. I understand the truth, and I express it perfectly. Eric. Light a candle. Imagination. The color is light blue, the location is between the eyes, and the disciple is Bartholomew. Imagination is our power to shape and form our dreams of good. Through imagination, we turn obstacles into opportunities. My dreams of unending good come from God. Betsy. Light a candle. Mm -hmm. 
zeal. The color is orange. The location is the medulla. The disciple is Simon. Zeal is the fuel that propels us toward our success in life. With passion and enthusiasm, we accept our divine inheritance of vibrant health, abundance, and unlimited joy. I am alive, awake, and excited about my life. I celebrate the powerful rebirth of divine joy within me today. Lisa. Light a Power. The color is purple, the location is the throat, and the disciple is Philip. The power of power is our communication faculty. Affirming power with understanding releases this power to heal and bless our lives. I communicate my needs and desires clearly and honestly without fear of retribution. As a result, I witness a willing universe united in cooperation to provide me with my good. Gabe? Light a candle. Love. The color is pink. The location is the heart. The disciple is John. The power of love is the pure essence of spirit that binds together the whole human family. It is the harmonizing sacred energy of all good flowing from our being at all times. I am a radiating center of divine love. My mind shines forth with divine ideas for wholeness, harmony, and joy. Patricia. Light a candle. Wisdom, the color is yellow, the location is a solar plexus, and the disciple is James. The power of wisdom works with the power of love to enable discernment in all of our thinking to create a perfect balance. Love and wisdom is the light on my path. My way is made clear. I know what to do, and I know how to do it. Gloria. Light a Order, the color is deep green, the location is the navel, the disciple is James of Alpheus. Order is the perfect balance of thought, word, and action to bring about our perfect existence. My life is in perfect order as I give my thoughts over to spirit to adjust and prosper my life in every way. Therefore, I may embrace each event and outcome as right and perfect, just as they are. Kathy. Light a candle. Strength, light green. The location is the lower back, the disciple is Andrew. Strength is the unfailing energy of God. It moves through us calmly and unimpeded by any condition outside of us. The power of strength is our ability to be quiet. God's power sustains and strengthens me. My mind and my heart are at peace regardless of situations, conditions, or circumstances. Marianne. Light a candle. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Light a candle. <laughs> Elimination, the color is russet. Invocation is the bowels, the disciple is Thaddeus. Elimination is our innate divine power to let go of old, worn out thoughts and conditions so that new ideas of good may take root in consciousness. I let go and let the light of unfailing truth fail my whole being with freedom, peace, and joy. I now release from my mind and body all that no longer serves my awakening. Paul. Light a candle. Life, the color is red. The location is the reproductive glands, and the disciple is Judas Matthias. Divine life is pure, perfect, eternal spirit itself. The life of God is our life, and we are perfect expressions of it. God is life itself. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life extends beyond my body. Life is what I am. Today, I choose life, and I choose it more abundantly. Ashley? Light a candle. Light a candle. For the old man who sits staring at a frosty window pane, light a candle. For the woman who is lonely and every Christmas it's the same. For the children who need more than presents can breathe, light a candle. Light the dark, light the world, light a heart or two, light a candle for me, I'll light a candle for you, light a candle for the homeless and the hungry, a little shelter from the cold. Light a candle For the broken and forgotten May the season warm the soul Can we open our hearts To shine through the dark Light a candle Light the dark Light the world Light a heart or two Light a candle for me, I'll light a candle for you. And in this special time of year, may peace on earth surround us here and teach us there's a better way to live. And with every flame that burns, we must somehow learn A 
I'll light a candle for you. Light a candle for me. I'll light a candle for you. So I invite you to close your eyes or gaze down at the floor in front of you or maybe at the candles lit in front of you. And let's take a breath. Breathing in, God is, and exhaling, I am. God is, I am. With these breaths, we relax our mind and we relax our bodies. We relax into knowing that we are never alone. We are always one with God and each other. Bring your thoughts and concentration to your 12 powers, which remind us that the Christ of God is awakened in us now. In your mind's eye, imagine the power of faith in the middle of your brain and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. In your mind's eye, go down to your low back and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in my power of strength now. the power of wisdom in your solar plexus, and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. Behind your heart, the power of love, silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. Between your eyes and your forehead, the power of imagination, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. The power of will behind your left eye, silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. The power of understanding behind your right eye, and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. The power of zeal in your brainstem, and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. The power of order in your navel, and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. <coughs> the power of illumination in your lower abdominal area, and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. And in your generative organs, the power of life, and silently say, the Christ of God is awakened in me now. Let us hold these powers in the light and go into the silence to allow for the realization of their energy and empowerment within each of us. So we have Gloria's Panettone in the kitchen today. Just found it. And it's fruitcake flavored. <laughs> Now, I, you know, it's, it's a funny thing about love. I'm making a connection here. You know, I just love fruitcake. I don't know if anybody's actually ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, Marty, oh, Patricia, I love fruitcake. I think we throw that word around a bit here. Don't eat it all. <laughs> they brought it for everyone to share. That's fantastic. That is just fantastic. I had a student once, I, th I talked about the rat thing with me and uh, I don't care for them. And she said, what, rats are cute. I said, shut up, <laughs> get your own class. <laughs> but how we throw that, whoa, I love this and I love this and I hate this and I hate this. And you know, even my grandfather who I bought used to buy a fruitcake for every single Christmas. I get it at Macy's, take it home and he, Enjoyed, he ate it. But never once did he open it up to, oh, I love fruitcake. <laughs> he said, thank you, which is the correct response. And then he ate it, which is the correct response. So let me know, it's safe to buy it again. But that word love, it's, 
Love is an action and love is an experience. I love you is up there with I'm sorry. If you don't mean it. If you don't understand it. If you're not using it from your, your spiritual place. Oh, I just love you. What it really means is I really like how you treat me. I really like what I see in you. I like how you agree with me. I love how you agree with me. Oh, well, I, I just love him, but you know. I love her, but you know. And it's, and it's, how do we get on board with the love of God? Because with the love of God, there are no exceptions. Now, we're not talking about the like of God. We're talking about the love of God. The, 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 <laughs> That the, the, our divine nature, our innate nature, that there is no absence of love in any of us. But you see, it doesn't start with me realizing it about you. It starts with me realizing it about God itself. And then start, and the next part is to realize it within myself. That, oh, there's no absence of love in me. I, am, I could never not be loved. And then the next part is, so my neighbor could never not be loved. And everything else is behaviors and opinions. Everything else is just opinions and preferences. And so to get, to get on board with that, we can also get on board with the psychological value of that. To really, oh, I, I, have, I have sensations, I have feelings, as David would tell you. And, and now I'm telling you. I see someone who re reminds me of someone that, you know, if I had a lovely experience with that someone, wow, I, I am inclined to, let's go to lunch, let's, let's go have fun together. And if you remind me of someone who had forgotten their God selves, chances are, it's like, oh, get away from me. You're a burden. But to take the time and realize, wait a minute. It's anyone is only a burden because of personalities. In the truth of our being, fine. Let's all run on into the kingdom together. Let's all just hurry up and get into the kingdom together and put these personalities behind us. Put these preferences and dislikes behind us. And uh, let's just hurry on into the kingdom before we forget again. You just kick him. <laughs> oh, it looked like he went. <laughs> I was mistaken. <laughs> That's a good idea. Go ahead, kick him. Because <laughs> Marty, this part's for you. <laughs> ah. So, from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament, Spirit says to us, "The reason for all things is love. Division." is the opposite of love because division excludes. Love cannot exclude. Love is whole, knowing only truth. Become as an empty shell to know love. That is your reason. That is your true desire. To look on the world and divide it by judging is not love, and so it is not what you want. Lay down what you do not want and accept joyfully that which you do. I used to uh, attract a lot of people who rejected me, and I, if I, you know, and I always thought, what's what's wrong with them? Why why don't they want me at their party? Why don't they want me? Here? Why don't want, they want me there? And I, you know, and I and I would defend. Well, it's their loss, you know. I would do all that stuff because my feelings were hurt, but I didn't know how to look at myself and say, what's up, Sean? What is up? That Everybody wouldn't want you to hang out with you. And, and, and then I, I began to get healthy, physically, mentally, spiritually. And then I found new people to reject me, mostly heavy smokers. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember going to a wedding in, in Denver. I was, I was uh, in a very healthy state in many ways, still learning, still growing. But I didn't smoke anymore. I was at my six-month anniversary of not smoking. I was at a wedding in Denver in Platteville, Colorado, population 110. Hundred, 109 of them smoked. <laughs> oh, it was the hardest. Oh, so hard. 
I was so high. I'm, uh... Hey, Karen, in case you're watching. I, uh, it was her wedding. And it was a sweet wedding in this kind of old country church. And I remember she, because it was a cabaret wedding. A lot of cabaret people showed up. And she, she appears at the back of the church. And she's got a sequin, a white sequin wedding gown. It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. And there's someone carrying her train. And she's on the arm of her father. And there was someone carrying his oxygen tank. I thought, they smoked. They smoked a lot out there. And I just, I had... Uh, I did the only thing you could do. I had six pieces of wedding cake. <laughs> to get through, her mother gave me a piece of the groom's cake. It was the best poppy seed cake you'd ever want to eat. Her mother gave me a piece to eat in the car on the way back to Denver. Point on this is, nobody wanted to ride in my car. And I thought, what's up? And I realized, oh, they all smoke. I'm no fun. I, I do not party anymore. I don't drink. I don't smoke. So I went, I, it just seemed like I kept setting myself through school, through all sorts of things, where I was not the desirable one. I finally had to find a place where I could be at the head of the room. Hey. <laughs> but it hurt my feelings, and I thought, what's up? And I, and, I, and I learned, it is me. It is definite me. There's nothing wrong with me. It's just that, for whatever reason, in many groups, I'm not the one. Who, who was wanted for whatever reason. And so I had to find a group that wanted me. And, it, and I certainly didn't settle. I found a group I could identify with. I found a group that, uh, who has been through a lot of stuff. And so they could identify that I'd been through a lot of stuff. And that's how love began to evolve in my life, as opposed to like, as opposed to nice. You know, I'm a lot of things. I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm not nice. I'm really not, I'm not mean, I'm not unkind, I'm not nasty, but I'm not nice. I, 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 uh, I really don't like doing things because it's a nice thing to do. I have to look at it and say, what's the spiritual value in this? How will we all grow spiritually by my participating in this conversation, in this lunch, in this dinner, in, the, in this, uh, getting up here and speaking? What is the spiritual value for all concerned, it by showing up. I had to look at that because if love is love rather than nice, I'm not a bad person because I don't want to have lunch with certain people. And other people are not bad people because they don't want to have lunch with me. It still affects me when I hear about a party I wasn't invited to. Why, why didn't they want me? I don't know, and I'm not going to go ask them. But nevertheless, and, is it, and here's the worst one, isn't it? When you're not invited to a party you didn't even want to go to. <laughs> even the people you don't want to hang out with don't want to hang out with you. When it's like, How could they not want me? <laughs> Loser. And, it's like, and, and so to begin to look at that and still say, but in God, I am good. And that's not settling. That's the laying of your foundation. In God, I am love. In God, I am worthy. So many of the things I want to participate in and so, socially over the years have been the very things that would distract me from God. I remember when I did Vipassana, it was the, the second time I did it. And those of you, you know, many of you know about it. But there's two assistant teachers up on platforms uh, on the male side and the female side because the main teacher is on video, Sangoenko, uh, so that way everybody's getting the same lesson. So you get him on video and audio tape. But, and you don't talk for the 10 days, in case you don't know what Vipassana is. It's a type of meditation, 10 hours a day on the floor, and you do not speak for 10 days, except at lunchtime you can make an appointment with the assistant teacher for a moment to speak uh, you know, about Vipassana. The first time I, the first year I made the appointment because I thought I had this down, I thought I got it. And I went to him and I said, oh, so I get it. That, because what Vipassana promises is to, uh, the eradication of craving, aversion, and ignorance. And my thought was, oh, I crave comfort. 
How do I know this? Because I have a great aversion to discomfort. You know, it's, you know, we sit there, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. Yeah, and, and if you're sitting on the floor for several hours at a time, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. And because it's horribly uncomfortable unless you are really in your body. And so I went, and my ignorance, I got it, was my ignorance was that if, I thought, I thought if, if, I could just get comfortable, I wouldn't be uncomfortable. That was my ignorance. So I went to him to have our discourse. And I said, I think I have this down now, that if I, you know, like a craving, if I just let go, my ignorance is that if I, uh, Get comfortable, I won't be uncomfortable. What do you think? And he said, I think you should just keep doing Vipassana, Sean. And that was the end of our interview. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, we're not, this is not, we're not here for the intellect. We are here to do Vipassana and heal. So the second year, you know, halfway through the event, I'm a little lonely. So I made an appointment. And I didn't even like this guy very much, quite frankly. I don't know why. Did a personality that, you know, we all have preferences. But I made my appointment, and he was running late for whatever reason. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then I get the word from his assistant, can you maybe do it later this afternoon? And I said, what? Suddenly I'm offended. <laughs> Suddenly I've got offense to add to my ignorance. Uh, and, and I huffed out. I walked out, and I didn't leave the whole place, but I walked out of the entryway there in a huff. And and the guy came running after me and said, it's not my fault. I said, I didn't say it was. <laughs> Nevertheless, I had an appointment. I should have kept it. But as I walked back to my room in my huffiness, I got it. This man was not my teacher that I wanted to sit down with. I was lonely. And I needed some, I didn't need, I wanted some attention. I wasn't going to get what I needed from him. I would get what I need from going within and being. That's an act of love. Both of those, the realization, this person did nothing to me. In fact, circumstances did me a big favor to help me to the realization. And the only reason I could get that realization is because I was listening. In the silence, I was listening. I loved myself that much that in the silence, I was listening. Now, last week, a friend of mine went over to a friend of hers to have a healing, you know, an energetic healing. And the next day, we're talking, and she would say, oh, she's so good at what she does and everything. I said, but do you, do you know the real thing that, about that healing that, that you got from that healing and why you got it? And she said, no. And I said, because you said yes to it. The healer can't do anything unless the student or the... What do you? Healy. Healy. The Healy <laughs> says yes. In the Bible, we read that Jesus went back to his hometown, uh, Nazareth. And Nazareth must not have been the nicest of places. We know this because there's a little spot in the Bible there where somebody, some leader is told that this man is from Nazareth. And the man says, could anything good come from Nazareth? So it tells you, but he went home, and when he, and he left, the Bible tells us, few healings took place there because they could not say yes to the hometown kid. Who's he? Who's he? How's he? What, what healing? What does this mean? How stupid of you? Don't bother us. In love, we say yes to our good. In, divine, in the realization that I am loved, with an everlasting love by God, and I cannot not be loved. Do you understand this? I cannot not be loved. No matter how I am being treated in the world, I cannot not be loved. If I go to the grocery store and I am treated like an invisible being, I am still loved. If I get cut off on the highway, I am still loved. If someone in our own home has an attitude, it doesn't mean I'm not loved. It means somebody's in a mood today. Frequently, it's me. 
<laughs> in the mood in our home. And and so but it doesn't mean he's not loved, it means I'm in a mood. Remember that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it came from the pulpit. <laughs> I know. Oh, the wisdom that just pours forth. <laughs> Pay attention, everybody. <laughs> so you see, love, it's simple. It's ultimately kind, even if it's not nice. And it's impossible to understand. You can't define it. You can't describe it. You just have to know it is. It is the only thing that will give you solace is knowing love is. And I can't define it because there's so many things that take place while we're in these physical bodies on this planet that seem so unkind and so unloving, certainly not nice. But it is, if God is love itself, and I have personally accepted that God is love itself, I work diligently. Sometimes I forget, but I still work diligently. And the realization, love is here and it's present now. And this is what it looks like. This Love isn't always what it feels like, but this is what love looks like right now. So, Spirit, show me, tell me so that I can relax to know once again that I am loved. Show me how I am loved in this. Are you kidding me? And sometimes if I see someone else struggling, suffering, I say, show me how they are loved. Show me. Show me. What is the most loving thing I can do to participate in this event? And I listen, and sometimes it, it, I get the oddest answers. I remember Gloria saying that once she was doing a healing and, and, she, and she heard the voice, really, I have to tell them this? I was like, oh, I don't want to tell them this. this. I didn't know this was the message I was going to get to tell someone who's on a healing table. And I was like, sometimes this is the message that we get. I'm going to light our Advent candles. Somebody just said, oh, good. <laughs> I, yeah, shake it up here. This final season weekend of uh, Advent, our first week was faith or hope, the candle of hope, knowing the difference between faith and hope. Hope is for the future, and faith is right now, and I have faith right now that I am loved. And our second week was joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So we light the candle of joy. You can just see it. The third week, the pink candle, is peace. The peace of God residing in every cell, every tissue, every fiber of my being, in my assurance of the good that is and the good that I am. Ouch. And <laughs> our fourth candle, the candle of love within our Advent season. The coming forth, not for the future, but right now. To know that I am loved and cannot not be loved. And so our four candles lit in their beautiful candlesticks that Sharon Diaz gave us. <laughs> she knows I like something glitzy. And she, uh, she, she surprised me one afternoon with those. And I was thrilled with the surprise because it's almost always good to be surprised with something glitzy. <laughs> almost. <laughs> but it's always love. So I'm going to read one last thing here for us. And it comes from 1 John chapter 4. It starts with verse 18. Fear disappears within the awareness of love. Because within the awareness of love, there is also the knowledge that there can never be anything to fear. We love because we are love. And love is all that we are capable of. 
To love God is to know God, and to know God is to love all things, because all things come from God, which is love. To not love is to believe in falsehood. This is merely misperception, since all that is, since all that is, is all that is. And all that isn't, never was. Take that with us today. Remembering all that is, is all that is. And all that isn't, never was. So let us not hate ourselves. Hate our lives. Treat ourselves a, with an absence of love over what never was. They were just behaviors. They were just thoughts. They were just words. But they never were truth. They never were a reality. I've never been anything less than love. And you have never been anything less than love. What's wonderful is we're never going to be. And here's the deal. They will never be anything less than love. So let's wake up and open our eyes. And we call upon the highest voice within us to say, and what ought I say here? What ought I think here? What ought I do here? What ought to be thought, said, or done by me in the greatest expression of love? Take a breath. We give thanks now that we would even consider such things. That we would transform our thoughts, our opinions, into our greatest desire, which is to know love without a doubt. So, to carry us further on this journey, let's welcome Joyful Noise. <laughs>